Today's lecture is on practice health, safety, and environment procedures. We're going to have two learning objectives, apply basic safety procedures and apply emergency procedures. So the implications of the occupational health and safety on the efficiency, morale, and customer relations. First, improved health and safety performance, of course. Reduced cost associated with accidents and incidents. Remember, uh, having an accident or being in accident it's, is quite costly on the part of the employer and the employee. Improved staff, tra uh, staff relations and morale. Improved business efficiency. Improved public image and uh, public relations, of course. Lower insurance premiums, easier access to finance, increased regulatory compliance, improved confidence, and it can boost the corporate and social responsibility. So some identified workplace hazards are the following. Uh, first one is on manual handling. So handling is or lifting something. So manual handling includes any activity that requires a person to lift, to push, pull, carry, hold, or move an object, person, or thing. So the weight of the, of the object, frequency of manual handling, avoiding sudden or jerky movements, planning the movement or lift, uh, lifting and of surfaces all need to be considered. Uh, you have to remember all this once. Again, the weight of the object, the frequency of manual handling, how often do you do it, the avoiding, uh, avoidance of sudden and jerky movements while lifting, especially when you're trying to play around with other uh, employees, planning the move or lift, and lifting the end surface all, so they all need to be considered. Lifting and moving equipments and materials, uh, panel beating and work in awkward postures such as removing or replacing engine parts under car bonnets are some examples of manual handling tasks that you may have to do in the automotive industry. So when you're trying to do this once, you also have to learn how to uh, position yourself properly and how to handle uh, these things manually. Uh, still, some identified workplace hazards are machinery and equipment. So there could be uh, poor maintenance or some machines may be poorly designed. Um, if you are inexperienced and you lack uh, training, then there would be a higher risk of injury from these tools and equipments and its operators. So first thing is you have to equip yourself with these equipments and machinery and you have to know how to deal with them properly. You know, in the Philippines, something very interesting about uh, mechanics here is they learned how to um, work things out, although... Um, Machineries or equipments are poorly designed or are poorly maintained. So even if the machinery or the equipment is destroyed, kaya nilang uh, gawan ng paraan. But then, because of these uh, ginagawang paraan na ito, it can actually cause injury to uh, the worker or to the handler. So we really have to be very careful and we have to use this paraan in a very, very minimal way. Okay, hindi yung palaging ganun na lang. So kung kailangan ng palitan yung equipment o machinery, papalitan na lang. Huwag nang yung remedyohan na lang, remedyohan na lang. Kasi it can be risky to your, it can be risky to you as the worker and it can even cost your life, which is even more expensive and we do not like that to happen. So under this machinery and equipment, we have the hoist. So, ito. so, hoists are used to elevate vehicles so repairs can be made safely by people working beneath the vehicle. The safe operation of hoists is essential and depends upon the comp competent operators and strict maintenance and inspection routines. So, actually, before handling any machinery or any equipment, you have to make sure that you have inspected them. Every hoist must be subjected to a pre-operation check and routine expense, inspection sorry, and maintenance must be carried out at least every three months. Okay, at least yon. Ibig sabihin, it can be more than that. 
Okay? So, the next one is we have the air compressors. Air compressors are dangerous and should never be used to blow dust or dirt from clothing or work materials. Okay, baka may, may iba sa inyo gumagawa nun. So, compressed air accidentally blown into an open wound can be fatal because air can be forced into the bloodstream. So, asbestos has been used in some vehicle components such as brake lining. So, there is the possibility that asbestos fiber may be found in the automotive workshops such as the compressed air. So, it should never be blown especially to an open wound. And if you do that accidentally, then make sure you visit a, a, do a doctor already or a medical professional uh, for it to be treated right away. So, you have to be very careful about using your air compressors. The next is the engine. So, the engines have exposed moving part, uh, parts, sorry, such as the fans and the belts. Ito yung uh, belt, okay? Yan, hindi kita dito yung fan niya. Which could catch fingers and exhaust emissions can be fatal if they build up in an enclosed area. So, hindi siya open space, for example. So, the emission of the exhaust can be very dangerous also. Next, we have the power tools. Handling your power tools. So, this one would include the spanners, wrenches, and screwdrivers. Yan. Kung titignan natin, madali lang yan, pero it can, they can always cause accidents. So, many of these tools used in the automotive industry are powered by electricity. So, your employer must make sure that all electrical machinery and equipment are kept in a good working area or order. Or, you yourself as the worker, without uh, somebody telling you, should know how to keep them properly because at the end of the day, you are the ones who will be using them. Electrical plugs and switches must be checked regularly to make sure they are not damaged. Oh, LEDs can uh, become split or frayed and these two must be inspected for wear each time they are used. Okay? Oh, for the hand tools such as spanners, wrenches, and screwdrivers, uh, they will be used in every job as well. So the, the most common injuries from use of hand tools are to the hands and to the fingers, okay? So, using the correct tools is an important way to avoid these injuries. Um, kaya marami tayong tools kasi may kanya-kanyang gamit. So, wag mong sabihin, gamitin mo yung martilyo in, the, in place of the wrenches or gamitin mo yung screwdriver in place of the spanners. Siyempre, hindi pwede yon. So, kailangan yung kung ano yung gamit niya, yun ang panggagamitan mo sa kanya. Hindi ngayon sabi ko kanina na kailangan iremedyo na lang lagi kasi hindi mo mahanap yung mga tools mo. So, ito na lang ang gamitin mo. Hindi po pwede yung ganun kasi... Once you damage your hands or your fingers, you will not be able to do job, the job for a very long time. Next, we also have the welding. Okay, so in automotive, in the automotive industry, hindi tayo hindi mawawala ang pag weld kasi nga um, iron ang mga materials dito. Welding operations generate hazardous fumes, that's first, and should be separated from other workshop activities and from workers who may not be protected by fume extraction systems or ventilations or appropriate PPE. It may be possible to weld out of doors in good weather at times, risk controls will be needed to prevent exposing the welder and the other workers to the risk. Okay? So, be very careful. You have to protect your eyes also. Marami na ang mga nag-welding na walang proper eye gear. Eh, feeling nila kaya nila. Tapos, o oh, yun, masakit pala. Yan sa mata. Next, we also have slips, trips, and falls. So, that could happen. Aside from those machinery, uh, accidente nga eh. Sometimes, our hands become clumsy, okay? And we really cannot say when those things happen. So, uh, poor housekeeping is the culprit to this one. So, we have to do housekeeping uh, every now and then or every after uh, repair. So, engine parts, airlines, and hoses left on the workshop floor can result to preventable accidents. So, doon tayo oh, natisod, ganyan, natalisod. Metal bins should be provided for waste disposal. This should not be allowed to overflow. Okay. 
hindi totoo yung sabi nilang pagka uh, mekaniko, dugyot. Hindi totoo yun. Kasi most dapat ang mga mekaniko, sila yung pinakamalinis. Kasi nga, they have to protect themselves. Okay? That's part of the job. So, confined spaces also. So, some of automotive workshops have pits to enable work to be done in the hoist if the hoist is not available. So, the vehicle is driven over the pit and the mechanic works underneath. In that case, confined yung space. Very, very small yung space niya. So, this work should never be done by someone working alone. A second person should be on hand outside the pit to monitor the work and to improve assistance. So, hindi pwede gawin lang yun ng mag-isa. Because carbon monoxide from the vehicle exhaust is heavier than air. So, the fumes may build up in the confined space under the vehicle. So, these fumes need na not be only from the vehicle being worked on if other engines are running nearby. So, there is a risk, a significant risk of exhaust emissions collecting in the pit. Good ventilation in es is essential in automotive workshops then. So, engine bay doors should be fully open at all times. If weather conditions prevent this, then work must be evaluated and tasks such as spray painting should uh, would also result in the build-up of fumes and they should be postponed. Okay? Next is noise. So, uh, sa tingin natin, hindi. Eh. Pero there is such a thing as uh, noise pollution. And we have to be careful with that because that is also hazardous. Excessive noise can cause permanent hearing loss and is probably the most common cause of hearing loss in adult people. Okay? So, hearing loss limits a person's ability to communicate at work, home, and even socially. There is no medical treatment and hearing aids offer limited benefit. And we do not like to be wearing our hearing aids while working. So employees in the automotive industry work with noisy tools and mas machinery such as wheel removers, compressors, drillers, grinders. And at the same time, they they put on some uh, ear pieces in their uh, uh, in their ears for music. They, wow! Uh, overwhelming ang noise. So, kung maglagay ka, wag nang maglagay ng music. So, you're just there to protect your ears. We also have something to protect our ears. While in an automotive shop, you may be exposed, exposed to noise levels exceeding 85 decibels. And that could lead really to hearing loss. So, we have to protect our ears. Also, we have as hazardous substances. So, petrol containers, for example, and gas cylinders must be stored securely away from heat sources and out of the path of vehicle traffic. These are highly flammable, flammable substances and could cause fatality and serious injury if not carefully handled and stored. Also, we have solvents. They are often used as cleaners and degreasers, pangtanggal ng grease. Uh, they can enter the body when a person breathes in their vapor through skin contact also or through the mouth from contact with food or fingers. So, gusto mo nang kumain na lang kasi madami kang gagawin so hindi mo na hinugasan yung kamay mo, hindi na malinis, so na, may grasa-grasa pa. So, it can be ingested. Solvents can impair memory and cause headaches, dizziness, fatigue, mood changes, or nausea. And exposure to high levels of solvents can cause liver damage, unconsciousness, death, and cancer. Spray paints, for example, contain harmful substances. Inhaling paint fumes may cause occupational asthma. Long-term exposure can even affect the brain, damage the reproductive system, and cause kidney or liver damage. So, contact with the skin may cause dermatitis. So, it's an inflammation of the skin. Batteries contain acid and must be treated with caution. If you are asked to handle batteries, you must be given instruction and provided with appropriate PPE, like rubber globes, eye protection. You may also need goggles to avoid splashes. Uh, overalls and uh, solid work boots. You should always wear work, work boots, boots, not uh, sneakers or soft shoes in the automotive industry, no matter what job you are doing. 
especially in the Philippines, madami yung nakachinelas dyan eh. O, sabi dito, we should be wearing uh, hard or solid work boots. Okay. So, dito, some hazardous substances that cause local and systematic, uh, systemic, sorry, effects. Andito, local terms. So, sa skin, well, meron din tayo sa lung, sa gastrointestinal tract. We also have the systemic effects on the nervous system, circulatory system, and kidneys, and the like. O, masisira ang ating katawan if we are so exposed to these hazardous objects. But then, if we really cannot do away with uh, with it, I mean, with these hazards, then we have to know how to uh, uh, minimize them, okay? Then, the occupational health and safety records, we have here operating manuals and maintenance records, okay? There should be a record of all those materials that you have. Risk assessments and hazard identification processes, records of instruction and training of managers, supervisors, employees on their obligation. It's not good enough just to comply with the OHA, uh, OHS laws. So, employees must be able to know their job or their responsibility. Okay, also records of introduction of regular and regular refresher courses, right? Emergency response manuals allocating emergency responsibility for incident notification. And of course, we also have ergonomic design should be taken into consideration. We have been discussing an ergonomic in the other sections already. So the a good example of a workstation sta here, okay, there. And then, the use of a footstool, okay? Kung hindi kaya ng height mo, o kaya, kahit naman kaya ng height mo para mas komportable ka. Yan. And then, this one's also proper handling of materials. So, tignan nyo. Ayan, makukuba ka talaga dyan. Tapos, ito naman, masyado namang mataas. Ganyan. Then, here also, okay, the proper way, o, mga ngala yung kamay mo pag masyadong mataas. Then we have uh, safe manual handling, handling theories and practices. We have here step one, identify the hazards. That's very important. You don't know how to deal with it if you don't know what it, what it is. Then assess the risk, control the risk, then monitor and review. So have the control measures eliminated or reduced the risks, then have the control measures. Is the process working effectively to identify the hazards and manage risk? Yan, yung review na sinasabi. Para ma, ma, uh, ma you can do something about the uh, risk that you are facing. Okay, we also have here uh, the value of the risk score. So, this is on the assessment of the risk. Okay. And then, you have here the control of the risk. Um, in the hierarchy of control, the highest is elimination, followed by substitution. So, eliminate. Kung hindi kayang eliminate, you substitute it. Then, engineering. Kung may pwedeng gawin ang engineering sa mga... Um, um, machineries, for example, and then administrative, then your behavior. Behavior is very important. If you handle them uh, with less care, then that, that would be a problem. And of course, your PPE, controlling the risk. Then, still on the controlling of the risk for here, eliminate an example with here be uh, removing the hazard or uh, taking a hazardous piece of equipment out of the service ayan substitute replace as a hazardous substance or process with a less hazardous one then isolation restrict our access to plant and equipment or in the case of substances locking them away under strict controls so meron tayo dapat para sa mga very hazardous materials may may lalagyan dapat niya no next uh, engineering redesign the process administrative adapting uh, SOPs and then and PPE provision of personal equipment really okay um, this should be the responsibility of the company but if the company cannot do that then you have to love yourself and you have to invest in your PPE 
Selection and application of firefighting equipment. So here are the extinguishers. And if you notice, ang mga extinguishers natin, may iba-ibang gamit yan. Meron tayo para sa mga cloth, wood, rubber, paper, plastic. We also have for gasoline, grease, and oil. Kasi kung ito yung um, egg ang gagamitin mo para sa fire B, eh, it might not be very effective. Kasi nga, may para sa gasoline and grease and oil. Then we have electrical fires, combustible materials, kitchen fires. So in a, camp, in a company, in an automotive shop, kailangan meron tayo. tayo nung, uh, nung lahat ng mga fire extinguishers. Okay. Then, identification and labeling of portable extinguishers. So, meron siyang color code. Red with white label for water. Red with cream label for foam. Red with black label for carbon dioxide. Hindi inumin yun. Red with blue label for dry powder. Red with cream label for aqueous film. forming foam red with green these are not common that's for inert gas and re red with yellow la labels for wet chemicals also we also have uh, fire blankets okay uh, hindi siguro ito common pero i think we have to have them these are for portable fire fighting equipment okay meron tayong mga class a and class b din na uh, fires Ayan, so, yan. Then, we have the fixed system naman. Uh, hindi ito portable, hindi na transfer kasi fixed nga in the place itself. So, we have the fire hydrant, hydrants and rising mains, hose re reel systems, sprinkler systems, water mist and fogging systems, gas system, foam systems, and dry powder. Kung kaya lahat, di why not? Okay. We also have uh, fixed fire protection systems will usually be required uh, and are advisable. First is wear the usual equipments or requirements of the building regulation. So you have to know that uh, they have to be met. Next, in high buildings or buildings with deep basements where fire uh, protection systems are required to assist the fire brigade in the protection of the life of life. Next, in any building where the results of fire risk assessment show that life safety may be compromised by an outbreak of, outbreak of fire. In any building where it is necessary to provide compensation for some other fire precautionary measure. Then on the instructions of the insurer of the building, then where the consequ uh, consequential loss okay, or loss of business, cost of replacement equipment, and the like. Okay, next we have dangerous goods and hazardous chemicals handling processes. So we have some rules here. I have uh, five rules. First, follow all rules, established procedures. So rule two, be cautious and plan ahead. Think about what could go wrong and pay attention to it. Rule three, always use required PPE. Rule 4, make sure all containers are properly labeled and that the material is contained in an appropriate container. Don't use any material not contained or labeled properly. Hindi mo alam yun. Hindi mo pwedeng uh, ang amuyin ko nga. Hindi pwede, hindi nakukuha yun sa amoy-amoy. And then, rule number 5, read labels and the material safety data sheet. That's why we have to have a record of all these ones. Next, we also have rule number 6. Use all materials solely for their intended purpose. Sabi ko nga, hindi pwedeng para-paraan na lang, irimirimidyo, na that cannot be. And then, uh, we have rule number seven, never eat or drink while handling any materials. And if your hands are contaminated, don't use cosmetics or handle contact lenses. Sa mga nakakontact lenses, yun. Then, we also have rule eight, read the labels. Rule 9, store all materials properly. Laging sinasabi yan. We always have to remember your 5S. And rule 10, keep you and your work area clean. No proper uh, uh, handling of things. And then housekeeping is very important. Sabi ko nga, bawal tidugyot. 
Then, rule number 11, learn about emergency procedures and equipment. So, understanding emergency uh, procedures means knowing evacuation procedures, emergency reporting procedures, and all the other procedures. Yun lamang po. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you again in the next video.